So let's go ahead and uh, create a folder and then define what the data is going to be looking like. So I'm going to go back to the root of the application and then I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to call it DB for database and then init and then put a forward slash to make sure that it's created as a folder and not a file. And then inside of there, I'm going to create another file. So I'm going to press M to bring this menu and then I'm going to press A and then I'm going to call it init.sql because it's going to be an SQL file. So this is the initial script or SQL script that we're going to run every time we're going to launch the application so that we can create our database and our table. So I'm going to press enter on that. And if I expand this, you can see now I have this init.sql. Well, and this is where we're going to define what we want the patient to look like. So I'm going to collapse this. And what I want to do in here is to create a database. So I'm going to do uh, create. Uh, I'm also going to put all of the SQL statement in uppercase and then everything else in lowercase. So I'm going to do create a database uh, if not exist. And we're going to pass in the name of the database. So I'm going to do patient DB. So that's going to be the name of the database. And then I'm going to do use patient DB because I want to use this database. So patient DB. And then after that, I want to create the table. So I'm going to do drop table if exist again. So if the table exists, we're just going to drop it and I'm just going to call it patients. So patient DB is going to be the name of the database and then patients is going to be the name of the table inside of that database. So if the table exists, we're going to drop it and then recreate it again. And here I'm just going to say create table. So create table and we want to create the table called patient. Now we're going to define what we want this table to look like. So I'm going to go in here and then we want to do an ID. So that's the first thing I want to do. And that's going to be a big int. So I'm going to do big int and I want it to be positive. So I'm going to do on the sign. And we don't want this to be null, so not null. And I want it to auto increment, so I'm going to do auto increment. So that's going to represent the ID. And then the next thing I need is the first name. So I'm going to do first underscore name. And this is going to be a var char of 255. So we're going to do 255. And then we're going to give it a default, default value of null. So I'm going to do default. And then we're going to say null. So if they don't pass anything, then the, the default can be null. So that's not a problem. And then I'm going to copy this line and paste it a few times. And we're going to change this to last name. So I'm going to do last name. And that's also, also going to be a var char. And I'm going to see if I can format this a little. And then we're going to need an email. So I'm going to see if I can change this to email. So email. And that's also going to be a var char. And after that, I want to change the phone. So I'm going to do phone, also a var char. And then I want to also capture the address. So I'm going to change this to address. And that's also going to be a var char. And then the diagnose. So uh, let's do diagnosis. So that's going to be like what the patient suffers from. So we can capture that as a string, or we can just put a long string. And then we separate everything by a comma or something. And then we can just loop over this and then um, get different diagnosis if you want to. But we can represent it as a string. And then next, I need an image URL. So I'm going to change this again to image underscore URL. And that's also going to be a varchar. And then lastly, I need the timestamp. So we're going to do created at. So that's the time that the patient was entered into the system. And this is not going to be a var char. This is going to be a timestamp. I'm going to delete all this and then we're going to change this to timestamp and we're going to give it a default value as well. So the default is going to be the current timestamp. So I'm going to pass this in as current underscore timestamp. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can format this line a little bit. I'm going to go here and then move this over a little. All right, so we have a, an ID, a first name, email, phone, we have an address, we have a diagnosis, we have an image URL, and then we have the created at, which is a, a timestamp. So the next thing I wanna do is to set the primary key. So I'm gonna do a primary key, and we're gonna use the ID for that. So I'm gonna say reference the ID as the primary key. So we're gonna say ID. 
And then the next thing I want to do is to create a constraint and I'm going to use the email for that. So every patient is going to have a unique email. So I don't want a patient to be entered in a system with an email of an existing patient. So every email in our table is going to be unique. We don't want to have the same email for different patients. So to do this, I'm just going to add a constraint. So I'm going to go down here and then I'm going to type constraint because that's what I want to create. And there's a naming convention for this. So I'm creating a unique constraint. So you usually do UQ. So that's for you unique and then you put the name of the table so underscore and then the name of the table in that case this is the patient's table and then you put the name of the field in that case that would be the email so that would be a way to uh, name the constraint that you're trying to create and here what I'm gonna say is the constraint is gonna be of type unique so we're gonna say unique so we want this to be unique and what field we want all of that to be we want this to apply to the email field so we're gonna say email and then close this so we're going to be working with patients and all we're doing here is defining what the patient is going to be looking like in our database so whenever we save a patient we're going to need to pass in an id as you can see here and then we need to pass in a first name and then an email and then a phone an address diagnosis so whatever they have that whatever problem that they have and then an image for them that's going to be a string and then the timestamp now the timestamp as you can see i'm using the current timestamp that means we're never going to pass in the timestamp we're going to let the database um, stamp the time for us and then we set the primary key as the id and then we create a constraint as you can see here the constraint is just referring to the email and it's saying that the email has to be unique so that's pretty much everything that we have to do for now for this database we're going to come back to this and then create a store procedure a little bit later and then uh, add some other configuration some other queries that i need to configure whenever we're going to be working with uh, docker and everything but that's going to be later for now this is good you can see what our data looks like this is really really simple so you're probably familiar with this already with defining the id big ant and with just a data type for or some number that's going to be very large and then we want it to be positive that's why we're using the uh, unassigned here it cannot be null and auto increment everything else is varchar varchar the default is null and if we created that which is the time that we're going to enter the patient in the system we're going to let the time on the system in the database management system stem that time for us so we pass in the default as the current time stamp. so if we don't pass anything which we're never going to do then it's just going to set the current time stamp and that's exactly what we want and then after that we define the primary key we just use the word primary key and then we give it the id field so that's the id that's going to be the primary key and then we create a constraint here because we want every email to be unique for every single patient so we use the constraint keyword and then we give it a name and then we say that it's going to be unique and then we give it the field name which is the email so how that makes sense and now what i want to do is to just create the configuration so that we can pass in database parameters and then we're going to spin up a database and then see if we can have a connection